Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be a familiar game, Contra, for the 8-bit NES. Now this is one of those games I've actually previously done a long play on, but I figured, hey, you know what, it would be fun to go back and do a live Let's Play on it. Uh, much like I did with my Ninja Gaiden Let's Play about a year ago, where I had done a previous long play on it as well. Uh, but I wanted to go through it live so you guys can see that it's not an impossible game, even when you're talking and playing it at the same time. Uh, that point aside, my long play of Contra was actually sort of, uh, sort of like an ultimate run, me trying to max out the score in the game. I think it was like an hour and a half long run. Um, this is going to be just a short, probably 15, 20 minute long let's play where I bolt through the game once, and we're going to call it a day, and that's it. So, without further delay, let's hit start and get right into the game. No 30 live code or anything like that. Um, uh, that that's a good crutch for beginners, but honestly, I don't think NES Contra is that difficult. I mean, I was able to beat this game without dying back in like first or second grade. That was a long time ago, and I was very young. And much worse at video games, mind you, than I am today, so... Uh, Contra, um, especially in the video game online forum world, from what I read a lot, is a lot of people think this game is really difficult, and I, I honestly just don't understand that at all. And, well, I almost missed that spread shot because I'm too busy talking. <laughs> Contra can definitely throw you off guard if you've never played it before. You know, I, any game is like that. Any game with... Whoops! Why don't I do that? Any game that has bullets flying at you and enemies coming at you from all sides of the screen and whatnot um, is going to throw you off the first time you play. No matter how good you are at video games, there's gonna, there's gonna be stuff that's gonna catch you off guard. You're going to die. And in the case of Contra, you're probably gonna die more often than not the first time you play it. I mean, just look at these like turret dudes that just come out of the ground. When you first play this game, you don't know that those are going to be there. You're probably just going to keep running, and then boom, one's going to appear, and you're going to die. You're going to run into it, you're going to slam into it, or whatever. And, uh, yeah. So, but, that said, enemies in this game always appear at the exact same spot every time, for the for the most part. There are the, uh, the little popcorn enemies or so, um, or such. Or I should call them the football players. Uh, basically, the, the guys that are just constantly running out, of, out at you from both sides of the screen. They kind of look like football players. Um, you know, they could be a little randomized. But as long as you're constantly firing, you know, in the direction you're going. Or, or occasionally turning backwards and shooting behind you. Because they do start appearing behind you. You're not going to have too many problems once you become familiar with the game. There's really no excuse, in my opinion, to not be able to beat this game. Especially with the 30 life code. So, this power up here, R, I want to say stands for rapid. I don't know if that's the actual term or not. But uh, it essentially lets you fire out a little bit quicker. Uh, not so much a little bit quicker, is the, the bullets go down the screen faster. You can't actually fire... Uh, more bullets you could still only fire like two shots on screen at a time when it comes to like the spread shot uh, But it does allow the bullets to fly down the screen faster So you can thus you know defeat bosses and bigger enemies quicker obviously So um, for those of you guys that didn't know Contra actually originated as an arcade game and one of the cool things about the arcade game is it had these sort of behind the back uh, sort of like side stages and there was two of them in the game and the NES Contra follows that same formula uh, very close to the arcade version. Obviously, they had to modify the game to really work well on the NES. If they just tried porting the arcade version to Contra with huge sprites like the arcade game had, the, the NES would not have been able to hand that, handle that. So, NES Contra was actually sort of toned down a little bit to play to the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System's strengths. And uh, so what we have is actually a game that's based on the arcade game, and it has a lot of levels and so forth, and level stylings from the arcade game. But uh, it, it is still pretty different from the arcade game at the same time. It's really interesting. I, I like uh, a lot of those NES uh, arcade conversions from back in the day, because the arcade versions are awesome, but the NES versions usually offer something a little bit different. And so it's still fun to go back to both versions. It's not like some, uh, you know, Sega Genesis arcade conversions where it's like, oh man, this is like arcade perfect, and that's great, but it's like, oh, now I don't know if I'm going to feel like playing the arcade game if I ever see it. <laughs> that's not entirely true. That's not, it's, it's kind of a mundane moot statement, but uh, 
you know, for those of you guys that did not know, uh, you know, this is based on the arcade game of Contra. And if you guys want to play the arcade game of Contra and you never have, you can actually get it on a couple of, uh, couple of systems. You can get it on the Xbox 360. Um, it's available through, well, I don't know if it's actually available on Xbox Live anymore. Uh, I don't know if it's been pulled or if it's still there. Uh, it was a very, very early Xbox Live release. I mean, I'm talking like 2006 or something like that. Um, but it is available on one of the uh, Konami Xbox 360 discs. Uh, one of like the three packs that has... Uh, I don't know if it's on the same pack that has Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, but, yeah, you can get it on disc as well on Xbox 360. And that's a really cheap... A compilation. I highly recommend checking that out if uh, you don't have any of the those uh, Konami games on the Xbox 360, the classic Konami games. I really like the Arcade Contra. It's a really fun game. It, it controls differently. It sort of uh, mimics an analog style setup with a digital joystick um, where you can shoot in more than just eight directions. Um, it's, it's actually kind of interesting. A lot of people don't like that setup and I don't really blame them to be honest, but uh, once you get used to it, uh, it's actually really, really handy. And um, it's definitely going to throw you off if you never play the arcade version and and you've been playing the NES version of Contra for half your life like I have. Well, for me, it's a lot more than half my life. I'm 32 as of doing this video. And, uh, I believe I played Contra for the first time when I was like five or six years old. So, I mean, I've been playing Contra for a very, very long portion of my life. Uh, which might give me an unfair advantage, but uh, that said, I, I still don't think this game is that difficult. I really think anyone could be able to pick up and play this game and uh, get through it without too much trouble. So anyway, here we're on on uh, blah. we're on our uh, second stage, uh, not our second stage, our second behind the backstage. I'll, I'll just call it the third person levels because that's kind of what it is. Um, and uh, not too difficult. You got to watch out for these sort of. I don't even know what they're called, like these little logs these guys throw down. Um, touching anything on these stages will kill you in one hit. And pretty much touching anything in this game, uh, regardless of what stage you're on, will kill you in one hit as well. Except for these electrical fields. The electrical fields, you tap up, you sort of get zapped, and it freezes you in place, leaving you open. So, like that. Um, so you don't want to tap up in these sections, otherwise you can get frozen and you'll probably end up getting uh, pummeled by the enemy's bullets. So, after this stage, we're pretty much halfway through the game already. Uh, again, it's not a very long game. You can beat it in 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes, uh, depending on how fast you go through it. I want to say you can definitely beat it in 10 or 15 minutes if you just blaze right through it. Uh, which you can sort of see me doing in my long play video. Because again, that video, I wanted to see... Um, how high of a score I could get. Now, Contra actually maxes out um, at a very specific score, and I was trying to do that in my let's in my long play. Sorry, a few years back, I don't think I actually maxed out the score, but I think I got close. Um, but I ended up beating the game probably like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, maybe. Uh, it's a lot of times. You have to beat the game a lot of times to max out your score in the original Contra, and it gets harder and harder and harder. Uh, every time you do it, this game's difficulty actually can pick up to a very, very difficult level. Um, only if you're looping the game, though. When you first start off, the first couple loops really aren't very difficult. The first loop especially is very... To me, it's honestly easy. I mean, yeah, you have to be familiar with the game, like I mentioned when I first started this Let's Play, but it's not a hard game at all once you get used to it. So... But that's how a lot of games are. They seem difficult at first, but they're not actually that difficult. You just need to be familiar with it. So, yeah. Um, the point of that whole spiel, though, was that in my long play video, you can actually see me bolting through each run uh, fairly quickly. Once you start playing through the game multiple times back to back, you start getting into a rhythm. You start jumping over certain enemies at certain spots. You start cutting through enemies a certain way. And you can literally just keep going. Like these guys here, you can, those uh, turret dudes, you could sort of just, you know, keep moving, destroy them, keep moving, um, <laughs> without stopping. And so, you know, you can eventually get to the point where you're playing Contra like that, where you literally, oh, that was bad. That was my fault. Totally my fault. You can literally get it to the point where you just don't stop when you're playing this game. And it's really fun. And it also kind of goes to show 
how simple the game actually is. Not really simple. Simple's, simple ha kind of has a bad connotation to it when I say it in that way. And I don't mean it in, in a bad way, but I'm just trying to make the point that the game's not really that difficult. So... <laughs> Dudes in the water, they only come up at a certain point, and you can only actually hurt them when they're up out of the water. So you have to sort of time that. And these guys are kind of a pain, but I've got the spread shot, and you can just sit all the way back to avoid their bullets. It almost looks like they're touching me, but the hitbox is kind of small, surprisingly, in certain places. So you can just avoid those bullets. And we're going to be fighting another one here. Now there's actually a trick supposedly where these guys take so many hits, sometimes you're not going to be able to destroy them. Especially if you don't have a special, you know, weapon like the spread shot. The spread shot, you have to have the spread shot when you're running through this game. If you want to, if you want the game to be easy, easy, always have the spread shot. You know, number one rule in the first two Contras, always have the spread shot. You know, yeah, you can pick up the laser if you want, but it's not that useful compared to the spread shot. It's powerful, but it's not that useful compared to the spread shot. So, always get the spread shot in Contra games. Um, I mean, it's really a staple in the whole series. I mean, the spread shot's always been one of the best weapons, but it's especially the best in the two NES Contra games, or the first two NES Contra games. I don't really consider the third a, a, a legitimate true Contra game. It's interesting, but it's not... Yeah, it plays totally different. Alright, so we are very close. We actually only have three more stages. That's including this one, since we're at the beginning still. But, uh... This level is probably the trickiest of them all. Um, but again, it's still not difficult. As long as you kind of know what's coming up uh, ahead. And where to stop. Like, you've got these fire beams that come down. Like so. And as long as you know where these things are, and you know when to jump, you've got to... <laughs> your timing's got to be right. But as long as you know where these things are, and you know how to deal with them, it's not really hard. Here's another one right here. Just wait. Duck. Wait. Just like that. We're gonna wait. Duck. We're gonna jump and jump. Kill this guy. Now, there's a little trick you could do here. Oh, I messed up. Where you can sort of uh, shoot down at that power up and have it fly up and land on you right as you're jumping over, or you could just fall right into the power up. And this is, I don't remember what the power up, power up was called, I don't remember if it was like bionic or something like that. It basically makes you invincible for a short period of time, and it's pretty much run out already. You could tell it's still active that your character is just blinking, changing colors rapidly. Really, really useful power up, especially on that stage. Um, Unfortunately, it's only available at certain points in the game. And that dude is not very difficult, as long as you have the spread shot. Uh, he can be a little tricky if you don't have a, a power-up. Um, but you can jump straight over him and just shoot him in the head while you're jumping over him. Because remember, you can jump and shoot down, just like so. So... Now, uh, ooh, that was close. <laughs> this level can be pretty tricky as well, but again, like the last stage, it's just kind of knowing how to deal with uh, the obstacles. Now, in this level, as you can see, the enemies are starting to come out from behind me, so... And this level has a lot of these walls that just come up, so if you're playing this for the first time, I'd recommend just um, taking your time, sort of inch your way through, because they're not going to come up right underneath you unless you're absolutely bolting through the level. Now, generally, if you just sort of take your time, bit by bit, uh, you're going to be fine. And I missed that power-up. I needed those uh, those things to stand on in order to get to that. Oh, well. Not a big deal. I guess, technically, they're minecarts. <laughs> they look like minecarts, in a way. Whoa! Oh! That was dumb. That was totally my fault. Why did I press down? Oh, I can't get back up now. That sucks because I need... Oh, spread. Oh, no, man. God damn it. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a tight jump. But, hey, at least I got the spread shot. 
Yeah, I don't recommend taking the bottom way, because as you can see, the jump is a little difficult. And if you take the top route, if you miss the jump, you at least fall to the bottom. And, uh, if you don't die. But if you miss the bottom jump, you're screwed. You're dead. <laughs> so this part right here could be a little tricky. Like this. If you don't have the spread shot, just bounce back and forth like this right here. Your time has got to be right, obviously, but... The second there's enough room to go underneath one, just start moving. So, just like so. It's gonna be another turret guy right here, yep. And... Now something I wanted to sort of describe earlier is when you use your spread shot, it, it shoots out five bullets, like so. And you can do that twice. Now, if you shoot any more, you can't. And the way the game sort of compensates for that is once a couple of bullets are off screen, and if you're still mashing the button as quickly as you can, it'll sort of affect the wave pattern, and you'll shoot more shots uh, straight ahead. And it's kind of hard to describe, but you can kind of see it as I'm playing the game. And... Uh, It's it's kind of hard to describe, but you could sort of see it as I'm playing and as you play. Um, so, when you've got the spread shot, you can actually still shoot, say, more than two bullets into the guy that's right in front of you, because the second a bullet hits him, and the other bullets are flying over his head, you can still keep shooting bullets into him, kind of like a standard machine gun or something like that. And um, so that lets you pummel enemies, even if... Uh, uh, all your other shots aren't connecting, and they're flying off the screen. So here's this big dude here with spread shot. It's not that difficult. Uh, this guy can be tricky with your regular machine gun, especially on successive loops. Like once you get to the sixth or seventh loop, oh man, that guy takes so many hits. It's just ridiculous. Even with spread shot, he's difficult. Um, but uh, on this first run, he's really, you know, he's a cakewalk. So. It looks like I just picked up another uh, spread shot. And now, how could I tell that? Well, um, there's actually a way to tell if you've picked up, say, just the regular spread. Is if you have the rapid firepower, you'll notice your bullets are going across the screen a lot faster. Well, if all of a sudden your bullets just start to slow down again, that means you picked up a regular uh, spread shot power up, which completely overrides your rapid firepower options. So. If you've got the spread shot with the rapid option, uh, you don't want to pick up another spread shot. It's going to remove your rapid option. So, it's something to keep in mind when you're playing this game. Now, I'm pretty sure you do get uh, points for power-ups in this game. So, if you're playing for points, that's something to keep in mind, though. It's like, well, do I go for more points? Um, or do I, do I keep the faster firepower? So, if you're playing for points, obviously, you're probably going to make the exception and uh, go for the, uh, the slower firepower. But we're not really playing for points here. Points can be handy because you do get extra lives in this game. And I don't think the extra lives ever stop in this game. I think you, you literally just keep getting extra lives over and over. I just got one right there. And that's it. So if you're playing for ultimate survival, points can be really important, especially if you're trying to loop the game over and over. And there we go. That's the end. Let's go ahead and put the controller down. Yeah, so that was not even quite 20 minutes. That's probably about a 15 minute run, to be honest with you, with, you know, the talking in the beginning and, and so forth. So, there we go. So there you have it, guys. Contra for the NES. I thought it would be fun just to sort of let's play the game live, much like I did with Ninja Gaiden 2. Uh, if you want to see some more live let's plays of some of these games that I've already done long plays on, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple more of them. There are a few more games that I could live Let's Play. Um, like, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head that I've already done. Um, I have no idea. I'll go I'll go back through my video list and see what else I've done that I could re-Let's Play, uh, so to say. So, yeah. Um, man, Katra is such a great game. This is a game that I do like to play once every now and then. Uh, probably, you know, once or twice a year, uh, just because it's, it's not long, 
Like, I don't have to dedicate a whole afternoon to it. I could just load it up, play it 15 minutes later, be done, have had a good time. Um, Super C, which is the sequel, which was also based on an arcade game, um, was all, is also the same way for me. I love Super C on the NES. Um, I think I like the original Contra just a tad bit more, but Super C is still amazing as well. And if you haven't played it, I highly recommend playing that game. Uh, both Contra and Super C, in my opinion, are some of the best action games on the NES. Um, or action platformers, run and guns. Run and gun is the proper term. <laughs> so definitely play them if you haven't. But that's it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. And as you can see, it loops you here. And I've got nine lives. I've got nine lives despite dying many times throughout that run. So like I said, lives are a dime a dozen here as long as you're playing well and not dying every five seconds. But, um, yeah, I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to use the 30 live code when I played this game. And the first time I beat the game without dying, when I started the game over, I had 40 lives instead of 30, which meant I gained 10 lives throughout the course of my, my run. So, that's how many extra lives you can earn in this game. So, I mean, if you're having trouble with this game, uh, just practice. You'll, you're going to make progress. It's not a difficult game. Just... Don't play stupid. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. And until then, take care.